Today, slavery in the United States is a thing of the past. It is a black mark on the history of our nation, and the event that took place over the matter of it is still remembered as the time our country split into two. This was the Civil War. Very little justifies the 620,000 people that died and the billions of dollars spent by the government. And it was a time in history that would change not just its people, but its future as well. Standing alongside the surge of armies preparing for battle each day were spies, ordinary men and women who were risking their lives to obtain military information for their own sides. Among the most renowned, known for their wit and social charisma, were Rose O'Neill Greenhow, Belle Boyd, and Emma Edmonds, three women who worked tirelessly during the war into achieving invaluable information on the enemy. Only men were allowed to enlist as soldiers, though many women wanted to support their causes as well. Common day jobs included organizing food rations, working as nurses, and packaging war equipment, although those who wanted to have a greater effect became spies. Throughout the Civil War, there were many detective agencies founded in order to keep the concealed career of espionage in control. One of the most notorious for its success was the Pinkerton National Detective Agency. Alan Pinkerton was among the more famous spies that emerged from the Union's collection. He was an abolitionist born in 1819 in Glasgow, Scotland, immigrating to the United States at 23 years old and becoming the first deputy sheriff in Illinois. In the year of 1850, Pinkerton went on to found his agency, keeping his agents motivated with the slogan, We Never Sleep. He will continue his career in the practice of espionage by capturing several famous criminals over the years, including Rose O'Neill Greenhow during the Civil War. When the Confederacy initiated the Confederate Signal Corps, the intelligence agency of the South, it was purposefully launched in Washington, D.C., which was home to a hub of Southern sympathizers in the North. As a popular widow and hostess who was well accustomed with the city's high-ranking social circle, Rose O'Neill Greenhow quickly emerged as a celebrated spy in the first year of the war. She often used her charms and cleverness to extract information from officials that she met on a daily basis. Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy, credited her with alerting Southern troops of Union operations just before the first battle of Bull Run. However, all this action came at a cost. Alan Pinkerton was noted to track down multiple suspects in the capital, one of which was Greenhow for her peculiar habit of asking military officers detailed questions. Pinkerton followed her around for a short period of time, eventually amassing enough evidence to prove that Greenhow was conveying secret information to the Confederacy. He wasted no time in putting her under house arrest and proceeded to move her to the old Capitol prison with her daughter, Little Rose. While Rose O'Neill Greenhow had emerged as a leading figure in the South early on, her subsequent arrest diminished any hopes for continuing at the high-scale grandeur she had led for a short period of time. But Greenhow was confined in prison, using weak methods of trying to continue her work, another woman began to stand out for her effective seductive powers over Union men. Her name was Belle Boyd. Maria Isabella Boyd, who was more commonly known by Belle, was born in May 1844 in Martinsburg, Virginia, to a prosperous family with strong southern ties. After Union troops scattered into her hometown following a skirmish in 1861, Boyd found herself surrounded by rude soldiers who gave the residents little respect. In her post-war memoirs, Boyd wrote that she shot and killed a drunken Union soldier that year on July 4th after he addressed my mother and myself in language as offensive as it is possible to conceive. This prompted to begin her career as the rebel spy. Boyd's romantic antics did not go unnoticed. Newspapers from the North began to mention her name in various articles, dubbing her with nicknames like La Belle Rebelle and the Rebel Joan of Arc. She enjoyed visiting Union camps and gathering information, using her flirtations as a strong source of influence. With so much infamous popularity in the North though, Boyd found herself constantly being put under arrests. She was able to avoid being imprisoned until June 29, 1862, when she was finally confined to a jail cell at the old Capitol prison, the same place that had jailed Rose O'Neill Greenhow. Boyd was not a model prisoner. She waved Confederate flags from her window and sang Dixie at the top of her lungs, all while sewing messages into rubber balls being shot into her cell by fellow contacts. While Belle Boyd's life was certainly nowhere near calm, her life as a Confederate spy was done so with flair. However, somewhere in the Union lines, another woman was doing the same things in a very different fashion. 
Living under the identity of a kebbi hat, wool jacket, and trousers, Emma Edmonds was serving the Union as both a soldier and a covert spy, taking on mainly male disguises to hide her true self. Eager to avoid an early and unwanted marriage at the age of 17, she ran away from home disguised as a boy. She continued the masquerade of a man when she enlisted in the 2nd Michigan Volunteer Infantry Regiment under the name of Franklin Thompson. For almost two years, Edmund served as a male nurse and worked on other assignments. The turning point of her career came when she heard the news that her childhood friend named James Vesey was killed in an ambush while serving undercover as a spy for the Union. In spite of these events, Edmonds felt as though it was her job to prevent James's death, become a spy herself, and take his place. To survive in the South, Edmonds took on mainly four disguises, including Frank Thompson. Her first and most used disguise was a black man of good nature named Cuff. She used silver nitrate to temporarily dye her skin black and wore a curly wig to fit the part. She played Cuff mostly just to fit in with the Southerners rather than to retrieve information. Her second disguise, however, did fit this objective. It was a character named Bridget Oshie, a simple peddler who sold soap and apples to troops. She eventually had to flee from her missions when she became ill with malaria in 1863. Fearing that her disguise would be discovered if she went to a military wing, she checked herself in at a secluded private hospital. After her recovery, she found that Franklin Thompson had been listed as a deserter and was waiting for execution if found. Instead of turning herself in, she abandoned her role as a soldier and fled to Ohio. Robert E. Lee, General of the Army of Northern Virginia, surrendered his army to the Union on April 9, 1865. The defeat was the final blow to the Confederacy, as Lee's armies had been the most successful of the entire Confederate military. Despite the surrender, there is no doubt that spies contributed a tremendous effort in gathering data over the course of time in the Civil War. Memorializing the actions of these hardworking individuals forms part of the core of the entire war, an event that stands as a testament of how easily humanity can become divided.